Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is wonderful to see all of you beautiful smiling faces here again. It's been a little bit since I've sat in this chair and behind this camera and talked to you guys like this. I think I missed it. I think I missed you guys. I think this is what I want to be doing. <laughs> Anyways, today we're going to be building upon more Lightroom tutorials. And if you haven't caught any of my old tutorials in the last few months, we've been learning some techniques, some more advanced techniques, and today we're just going to be building upon those However, if you didn't watch any of those or you're new here, if this is your first time watching me talk to a camera, well, I think I'll be able to go over everything well enough that you don't need to have any prior knowledge of all those things. However, if you do feel a little bit lost, you can check those videos out here. And they might help you explain radio filters, graduated filters, or anything of that nature. So today we're talking about range masks. You might be asking, well, what are range masks and how do I use them? <laughs> I mean, that's probably why you're here. So with that said, well, why don't we just get started? All right, so before we begin, I just want to thank my sponsor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not sponsored. But before you skip, before you skip ahead, uh, even though this might be something you want to skip ahead for, I will have timestamps down below. I just want to bring up a topic that's been on my mind recently. Uh, I pay attention to the view counts on a lot of my videos, and it is quite obvious that many of you are here to learn editing techniques and how to enhance your photography, uh, your end, you know, your end goal photography by learning new techniques to edit with. And I just, I want to make it a point that there's a lot more to photography than just editing or learning different tools in Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One, and that there's a lot of merit in watching a video or just thinking more about how a photo was captured. Uh, and I know this is um, not everyone's cup of tea, but if you do want to expand your photography and really enhance it and really take it seriously, whether it's a hobby or you're just starting or you're trying to be professional, I do encourage you to watch some of the videos that I make that are in the field where I am going to take photos and I talk about my thought process behind some of those photos or how I possibly edited those photos or how I thought of how I was going to take those photos and then edit those photos later, whether that is exposure blending or focus stacking or how I chose a composition. All of those things I think have a ton of merit when you are trying to either learn photography or take photography more seriously. Now I understand that many of you uh, don't have a bunch of time to invest into learning all that stuff and a lot of the times learning an editing technique like the one we're going to talk about today is a low amount of time to learn something with a really high result or really good result. So you've invested very little time to get a really good result out. And I completely understand it. I watch a ton of editing videos as well. But if you are into adventure photography, watching someone go out into the field and take photos, that's what I enjoy the most. And I highly encourage you to check out those videos, uh, which you can find here. And again, no pressure. Obviously just keep watching tutorial videos because I'm gonna keep making them as well. I just think that I need to say and need to let you know that you, I do encourage you to watch some of those videos, whether they're mine, Thomas Heaton, uh, Nick Page, um, <laughs> insert any other YouTube photography adventure landscape person, and you can learn a ton and it's not editing related. Now, with that said, this wouldn't be a YouTube video if I didn't say to <laughs> like this video if you do end up enjoying it or subscribe if you do end up enjoying this content. But please do not subscribe to my channel if you don't enjoy what I have to say or what I have to show you. But if you do, well, you know what to do. And with that out of the way, let's get started in this actual edit. So what are range masks? Well, they're actually really simple, especially if you've already used graduated filters, radial filters, or adjustment brushes. All of those are considered local adjustments. And in each of those, they just do exactly the same thing. You just apply them to your images in different ways. If you've never used, for example, radial filters before, you can check out my video here. And I have multiple videos on how to use those. And that'll basically explain everything you need to know about those things. And you may have noticed in the bottom right corner of that tool, there's a range mass selector. And it'll make a lot more sense if we just jump into Lightroom and I show you. So let's do that. All right, so what are range mass? Like I said, if you've ever used the local adjustments, which are graduated filters, radio filters, or the adjustment brush, you have noticed down here there is a range mass selector. So let's just jump into editing this photo and it'll make a lot more sense as I do it. You can tell up here that in this image, my sky is probably the worst part of this image and I've already blended this together. So this was using a higher exposure and darker exposure, 
blended together so that I could get some of the detail on the foreground, but also not have a completely white sky. However, I don't think the sky is where I want it to be. So let's work on that. So normally what I would do is just add a graduated filter. I'm holding shift right now so that it doesn't, so that it's exactly straight. And I'm gonna bring that down. And anything above this top line will be completely affected. And anything between this line and this line will slightly have be less affected. And then anything from the middle line to the last line has a much less selection, which you can see just by me hovering over and showing you the red area. Now, what I wanna do is darken that sky because as you can tell, the right side of the image just looks completely white. And I'm gonna bring down the highlights. The other thing you'll notice though is now I'm getting this really dark area over here because of the, polar, the polarizer I was using to take the photo. And by using range mask, we're gonna fix that. On top of the fact that it should be pretty obvious that now this rock here has been affected by my editing, which is never a good thing. So what I wanna do is come down here and turn on range mask. And basically what I'm gonna end up telling Lightroom is, hey, I want this graduated filter to only affect certain luminance values and to tell Lightroom what luminance values we have a range selector here. The left-hand side affects all of your blacks and shadows, whereas the right-hand side is all of your whites and highlights. However, obviously the middle would be all of your midtones. but basically what's gonna happen if I start moving, for example, if I move down the white slider, it's gonna stop affecting those white areas, which is basically the entire sky. What we're gonna want to do is I'm gonna hold Option or Alt on a PC, and I'm gonna start sliding the blacks and shadow slider to get rid of it affecting the blacks or the darker parts of the image, which is what we don't want it to affect. And you'll notice that when everything is white, that means that the uh, mask is affecting everything. But when we move the slider up, it stops affecting all the black parts of the image, which would in this case be the rocks in our foreground. So I'm gonna to continue to move this, and this is while I'm holding Option or Alt on a PC, and just kind of hone in exactly where I want this to be. This is looking pretty good. And you'll notice, oh, let me go back. You'll notice that the black parts of the image are not being affected. The white parts of the image are being affected and our rock is not completely black, which is not what we want. We want it to be completely black. So to do that, I'm gonna go down here to smoothing, still holding alter option so that I can see exactly what I'm doing here with my mask. And basically I'm gonna keep going down until that rock is almost black, uh, pretty close. Now I can hit the show luminance mask and anything in red is what is being affected. And the good news is you can kind of see that there's a gradient from red to a lighter red over here. And that means that our mask, which is darkening the sky, is affecting this area of the sky more than it is on this part of the sky, which is exactly what we want considering we need this side of the sky to be slightly darker and to match this side of the sky. So if I just turn this off and on, you can see that it is now not affecting the rock in the foreground and it is darkening the parts of the sky that I want. However, it's not doing a perfect job of this part of the sky. So what we're gonna to need to do is make another filter and I'm just going to make another graduated filter here and just try to target where that dark part of the image is. Now, the other thing I need to do is reset these because that is not what we wanna do. And I want to increase that part of the image quite a bit. However, this is too much. So as you can tell, there is now like this white banding and everything looks pretty terrible. So I'm gonna go back down here to my luminance range mask. And I'm gonna show you another way you can select your luminance value is using the dropper tool. So I want this luminance value about right there. Now it gave me a value between 64 and 100. That's close, but I kinda of wanna bring down some of the whites and highlights because that area is the brightest part of the image, which I don't want to affect. I really only want to affect, like I said, this slightly gray area right here, which is gonna be, and again, I'm holding down Option or Alt, roughly, remember, every part that's white is what we're selecting, every part that's black is not. So this is getting pretty close. Probably need to bring it up some. We can bring down the smoothness some, again, and we can probably, we can get rid of that selector and readjust this just a little bit, move this around where we need it to be exactly. 
And that's getting a little bit closer. So if I delete that and undo to turn it back on, we're getting pretty close. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is zoom out of my image by holding shift, scrolling left, and I'm gonna add a radial filter to get rid of that last little part there. About, it's gonna be even like that. Maybe widen it just a little bit. And then again, we're gonna come down to our range mask. Now we can basically select exactly the same spot and have the exact same selection because that we know already what we want to affect. Oh, the other thing is you wanna make sure this is inverted so that we're only affecting what's inside of the radio filter. And then we're just going to bring that exposure up. And it's probably pretty close. Spread that out just a little bit, bring it down, and then uh, probably some more feather there. Now, it's not perfect. There's still a little bit of darkening there. And the other thing I like to do is zoom out of my images when I do stuff like this to really see if I've gone overboard with my edit. And I don't see any major gradients between here and here that looks like I've affected my edit in any way. So this is before and this is after. You can notice that there's a much more natural gradient from the left hand side to the right hand side, which would not be possible without using those luminance range masks so that I didn't hit this part of the rock and I could select just that part of where the polarization had darkened my sky. All right, so that was just scratching the surface of what the range mask can do, specifically using luminance values. You'll find yourself using that range mask pretty often, and it's the one I see most tutorials talk about. However, I also want to talk about the color range mask, and it's actually the reason I ended up making this video, because I was editing a photo last week from my Utah trip, and I didn't know if I was going to get it to a point where I thought it was good enough to show. And I started, I tried opening stuff in Photoshop, manipulating stuff that way. And eventually after a day of it sitting and me coming back to it, I used the range mask to basically enhance the image to the point where it is right now. And it's, I think a pretty good image. And that really brought it to life, but I used the color range rather than the luminance range. And so I'm pretty excited to show you that. So let's jump into that example. All right, so this is the image we're gonna be working on. And as you can tell, I've already, well, you can't tell. And as you can tell, I've already done my adjustments, contrast. I've even adjusted the HSL sliders, luminance sliders of HSL. I really pushed this image to try to get it to exactly where I wanted it to be. And I just couldn't quite get it where I, where I could envision it being. Uh, you'll notice that the center part of the image is far too dark. I mean, obviously our focus here is supposed to be this tree. So the first thing I did before any edits was do what I like to call a reverse vignette, which is just brightening the middle of the image. So I need to make sure I create this radio filter, click invert, and we're just gonna bring up the whole, basically the whole image by about half a stop and bring up the shadows a little bit. And again, if you haven't seen this technique used before, I talk about it in this video, but this still doesn't get me to where I want to be. And also this particular gradient isn't perfect. Let me feather it a bit more. There we go. That looks way more natural. I'm still not in love with where the edit is. I want my viewer to really see the tree. And right now it kind of, the values of the tree in terms of luminance really match the values of the art, the arch that's here. And I just, it doesn't, it almost looks like a 2D image. Well, it is a 2D image but there's not enough separation between the tree and the rest of the image. So let's add another radial filter. <laughs> and I'm acting like I, I don't know what's gonna happen here. I obviously know what's gonna happen, but just let me show you how strong and how powerful this is and remind you that I spent more than a day trying to figure out what I wanted to do this image. So we're gonna go, we're gonna create this radial filter and this is gonna be where our color mask comes into play. I'm gonna select color and anytime you're using the color range mask, you have to use the dropper. And I'm gonna select the dropper here. And then all you're gonna do is select the color that you want to affect. So I'm gonna select that color. And then I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna select one more color somewhere in here. And that's gonna give Lightroom just more information on exactly what colors you want. I'm gonna make sure invert is selected. Now I can go down here and say show selected mask overlay. And you can tell that we are only affecting the tree. 
there's a little bit of the tree trunk here, but that's okay. Brightening that up just a little bit isn't gonna hurt anything. So let's turn that off and let's go up here and actually enhance the image. Now remember, we're only affecting the tree. So I'm gonna increase, I'm gonna increase my exposure by about 0.4. Now I have a general idea of where I put everything when I did this and now I'm gonna bring the whites up by a lot. Remember, I'm only affecting the green parts of the tree. Increase my texture a little bit here. Do dehaze, even though it has nothing to do with the sky, that's gonna add a tiny bit, just a subtle amount of local contrast to that part of the image. Now, if I zoom in, you can get a really good idea of how good and how detailed those that part of the tree is now. And if I zoom back out and get out of this, now the tree really has separation from the background and it just, it really pushes the viewer's eye right to the tree. And if I zoom in, especially if this was in a large print, you could see the detail of every particular leaf and branch. And it just, man, just using that range mask made it so much easier. Because if I go in here, that's the wrong one, and I delete this, you can tell the difference. And it just really brings to life that part of the image. And I, I like I said, I tried to do this multiple different ways and using the color range mask really brought this image to life and basically made it to a point where I felt okay posting it and presenting it to you guys. All right, so I hope that showcased how powerful the range mask tool could be. And I genuinely edited that video a few, edited that video, edited that photo a few days ago and it inspired me to make this video. I, I spent a day thinking about it and I knew, I knew that somewhere up here, I knew there was a tool that I could use that would basically help me make that photo, enhance it to the point that I wanted it to be. And eventually I slowly, hamster wheel turning, figured it out and I get to share that with you guys, which is exactly why I love making videos like this one. And I hope I really showcased how to use both luminance and color range masks and also gave you the tools to think outside the box for yourselves, not to just apply it in the same ways that I did, but think about it in a lot of ways, how I might affect just particular parts of an image using a radial filter. And maybe I only wanna affect the greens. Maybe I only wanna affect the dark parts. All of those tools I'm now passing on to you and I hope that you learn something from them. The other thing you might be asking yourself is for example, in the first image, why I didn't just decrease the highlights or in the second image, why I didn't just use the HSL slider to increase the luminance of the greens. Well, I did, I did increase the luminance of the greens in the HSL slider. It just wasn't enough. It just didn't do what I wanted it to do. I can't control clarity or texture or contrast or the whites of just those parts of the image just using the HSL slider. Just like how I can't decrease the whole part of the sky that I want to with just the highlight slider. By using the range mask, you just get way more control, way more precision, and that's always a good thing in editing. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I love to hear what you think down below. And if you're not subscribed and you enjoy this content by the end of it, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, all that stuff that you have to do on YouTube nowadays. And again, thank you guys for watching. Can't wait to hear what you have to say down below. And I'll see you again on the next one. Peace.